Hello. Welcome. Let us pray. Heavenly Father. We desire to know you more and love you more. Open our hearts to learn of you from your word. Let your word be a light onto our paths. Even as we walk in this world. May we be shining lights for those who walk in darkness. You have said if we resist the devil. He will flee from us. Today, we ask for the grace to resist him in every sphere of our lives. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. When we believe in Christ, the Holy Spirit comes to make our hearts his home. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. When we come to God, he empowers us to overcome sin and the devil. It is like a force of protection around you. That makes you inaccessible to the enemy. That is why the Apostle John tells us in 1 John 4 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. God builds a hedge around you. So that the enemy cannot touch you. Satan testified that God had built a hedge around Job. Have you not made a hedge around him? Around his household, and around all that he has on every side. Satan could not penetrate that hedge. Do you remember Elijah? When his servant saw the armies of the enemy and was afraid. Elijah prayed that his eyes would be opened. So that he would see the chariots of fire around them. Why was that so? Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge. Even the Most High your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you. Nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, Psalm 91 9-10. Paul puts it beautifully in Colossians 3 3. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. For the devil to touch you, he must go through God. He would first have to overcome the Holy Spirit before he can touch you. And that is not possible. But we often hear of Christians complaining of demonic attacks. On themselves, their loved ones, and their homes. How is this, so? The devil is always stalking you, poking around your hedge. To steal, to kill, and to destroy you. The devil can only attack the Christian. Who has given the devil a foothold in their lives. How do we give the devil a footing in our lives? When the believer cultivate in themselves any known sin. They are giving the devil a foothold in their lives. Let us read Ephesians 4 25-31. Therefore putting away lying. Let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry, and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Let him who stole steal no longer. But rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give him that is in need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you, with all malice. Let us take them one at a time. First, we are told to put away lying. When we lie we give the devil a foothold. Bible says, Satan is the father of lies. When we habitually lie we become children of Satan. Jesus said in John 8:44, You are of your father the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character. 
For he is a liar and the father of lies. When we speak the truth, then the Holy Spirit can work in our lives. When we speak and live a lie, then the devil gets to work in our lives. Well, every Christian occasionally lies, which is bad in itself. But here we are considering Christians who habitually lie. Christians who are living a hypocritical life. We give the devil an opportunity to gain a foothold in our lives. Since God is truth, and his spirit is the spirit of truth. It is impossible to be a child of God and live a lie. Hell is prepared for Satan and among others, liars. Second, be angry, and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Revelation 12 12 says. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. Anger in our hearts gives Satan a foothold in our lives. Anger and murder go together. Jesus said in Matthew 5:22, But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment, whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. Note that there is righteous anger. For God himself expresses righteous anger at sin. And Jesus had to drive out the merchants from the temple. But sometimes our sinful nature pushes us beyond the brink. And we do more harm in our anger than good. When we are angry we say things that are hurtful. Third, stealing gives Satan a foothold. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly, John 10:10. 10, 10. Underpinning all theft is the lack of belief that God will supply all your needs. You are not content with what you have. That gives it a foothold. And he leads you down the path which ultimately ends in disgrace. If you start by stealing a pencil from the office, or a one dollar bill from your mum's purse, you will soon graduate to stealing billions. He that is faithful in little, will be faithful in much. He that is unfaithful in little, will be unfaithful in much, Luke 16:10. The next thing that gives Satan a foothold is filthy talk. Let there be no filthiness nor foolish talk nor crude joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving, Ephesians 5 4. It is nice to be around people who have a sense of humor. But it is outright disgusting to sit amongst people who delight in jesting. Or talks and gossip that tears people down. When we talk freely about filthy things. It takes the edge out of our conviction. And we ultimately begin to play down the sinfulness of sin. Finally, an unforgiving spirit. A Christian who havers bitterness in his heart is giving the devil a foothold in his life. An unforgiving spirit hinders the Holy Spirit from working in our lives. And robs us of the power we need to live victorious lives. The only remedy is forgiveness. The longer we harbor a grievance, the stronger the stronghold of Satan in our lives. It robs you of intimate communion with God. Let us pray. Dear God, we know that the devil is always seeking to find a foothold in our lives and lead us astray. We ask that you help us resist his temptations and keep our hearts pure. We pray that you give us the strength and wisdom to resist the temptation to tell lies. To speak in anger, or engage in foolish jesting. Help us to be kind and gentle with our words. To speak truthfully and with love. Help us to forgive others as you have forgiven us. We also ask for your help in resisting the temptation to steal. Help us to live a life that is pleasing to you, and to bring honor and glory to your name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.